I'm Jeff Hirsch, and in today's video, I want to talk about Photoshop's incredible Remove tool. The Remove tool is the latest in a long line of image repair tools that Adobe has added to Photoshop over the years. It follows the clone stamp, the healing brush, and the spot healing brush as a way to patch or repair smaller areas within your photos. Last May, Adobe added the Remove tool to Photoshop version 24.5, but it was entirely overshadowed by the introduction of Generative Fill in the Photoshop beta that was released at the very same time, and so it went largely unnoticed. All the attention and all the press went to Generative Fill, and nobody was talking about the Remove tool, which is a real shame. And while Generative Fill is quite amazing and deserves all the press it's been getting, you shouldn't overlook the Remove tool. It's a fantastic addition to our editing toolbox and a nice improvement on the spot healing brush for repairing images. Now these days, folks do seem to be finally coming around to how great the new Remove tool is, and I'm starting to see it pop up in YouTube videos and emails from some of the familiar faces in photo education. Glenn Dewis thinks it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but Tim Gray still thinks the spot healing brush does a better job. Personally, I'm more in the Glenn Dewis camp. In my experience, the Remove tool does a much better job at actually removing an element from a scene and replacing it with matching content. And it's not just copying existing parts of your image the way Content-Aware Fill does. The Remove tool is actually creating new pixel content in your photos the way Generative Fill does. What really knocks me out about the Remove tool is how much smarter it is than the Spot Healing Brush. The Spot Healing Brush is more generic in how it patches things. It's trying to heal or blend areas together for you, and it does a decent job of matching texture, tone, and color in many situations. By comparison, the Remove tool is much more focused on actually removing elements from an image. It seems to be able to take into account what was in front of or behind the element you're removing so that when it's finished taking the element out, it looks as if that removed element was never there in the first place. First, I want to show you how to set yourself up for success with the Remove tool, and then I want to show you how well it works with some live demos. Along the way, we'll compare and contrast the Remove tool with the other image repair tools so you can get a sense of why it's become my go-to for taking things out of pictures. I've got an example image opened up in Photoshop for us to work with. This was taken last July at Dedefoss in Iceland, and I just want to remove some of the other tourists from the photo and make it look like they were never there in the first place. Start by picking up the Remove tool from the Photoshop Toolbox. It's the one that looks like a Band-Aid with little sparkles next to it. You'll find it grouped in the Toolbox with the other image repair tools like the Healing Brush, the Spot Healing Brush, and the Patch tool. They all share the same shortcut key, which is the letter J. You can cycle through each of those tools by hitting Shift-J on the keyboard. And with the tool active, you'll have a few settings you can configure in the tool options at the top of the window. Now, if you're using the default settings for the Remove tool, you'll use it much in the same way that you would use the Spot Healing Brush. You start by painting it over an area in your image with the Remove tool, and when you let up the mouse, Photoshop will remove the element you've painted over. As you're painting with the Remove tool, Photoshop lays down a semi-transparent magenta overlay to show you a mask of the area that will be removed. The Spot Healing Brush works in a similar fashion, except its overlay mask is a darker and slightly less transparent gray. But here's where the two tools diverge in a crucial way. If you go up to the Tool Options bar and you uncheck the box that says Remove after each stroke, you'll be able to use the Remove tool to paint over the different areas you want it to remove, 
and it won't do anything to your image until you click the little check mark on the tool options or you hit the enter key on the keyboard. This allows you to carefully paint in or even erase the magenta mask that indicates where you want to remove things and it allows you to have much finer control over the process. This is something the spot healing brush can't do at all. With the spot healer, you have to do everything in one continuous stroke without letting up the mouse clicker. As soon as you let go, it's going to make the patch, and if you messed anything up while painting the area to be patched, you have to start over. With the Remove tool set to only be applied when you tell it to, instead of after each stroke, you can add and subtract from your mask as needed, and when you've got it just right, then you can have Photoshop remove those elements. You can even make the brush tip bigger or smaller for each stroke you paint, allowing you to get into smaller corners of your image or cover larger areas as needed. So that's a big improvement over the spot healing brush. You now have the ability to precisely build up the mask you want by painting and erasing with the remove tool and then having Photoshop take out the areas you had marked for removal. That's my number one tip for using the remove tool. Disable the option to remove after each stroke. It instantly becomes a much more useful and precise tool. The other thing you should know about the remove tool is that not only can you apply it like a brush, but you can also use it a bit like a lasso. Encircle an area and the tool will fill that area in for you. That's another thing the spot healing brush can't do. My number two tip for working with the remove tool is to create a new blank layer on top of your photo to hold all of your patches and then check the tool option to sample all layers when using the remove tool. Now, when you make patches to your image, they will be stored on that separate layer and can be tweaked or removed or repatched at any time because those remove patches haven't been glued down to the image and are on their separate layer. You can use the square bracket keys to make the brush tip larger and smaller, and you can switch the tool between painting and erasing the mask by clicking the plus or minus icons in the tool options. By default, the Remove tool will be in the Additive mode, but you can switch to the Subtractive mode if you've over-selected an area and you wish to erase part of the mask before telling the tool to go ahead and remove the areas you've masked off. Let's look at some live demos. We'll start simple with a look at some basic image repairs. In the case of this first image of a manhole cover and some cracked asphalt, either the spot healing brush or the remove tool will do a decent job. Because we have an abstract pattern as our background, the patch doesn't really need to be perfect. It just needs to blend in well enough to be believable. So in this case, we can use either tool and the results will be good enough. Here's one done with the spot healing brush, and here's one done with the remove tool. In this case, we get pretty similar results from both. Now let's take a look at this shot of tomatoes and avocados at a market. I'd like to take out all the little white stickers and leave just the veggies behind. And you might think that this is another case where either tool will do a decent enough job removing those stickers. But as it turns out, the remove tool does a much better job in general, and even more so, in a situation where the area being removed is in front of or behind another element in the image. The spot healing brush is going to sort of mush those areas together when you make a patch, but the remove tool is going to not only take out the offending sticker, but it's also going to reconstruct the content that would have been behind the sticker had it not been there in the first place. That's the genius part of this tool. Notice how the remove tool has actually gone in and rebuilt 
the tomato vine behind the area we removed. That's why I describe it as a smarter healing brush. The remove tool algorithm does a much better job of taking into account background and foreground elements, patterns, seams, borders, the direction of light, and more. It understands that things pass in front of or behind other elements, and it tries to make a patch that reflects this understanding. Here's another example. Take a look at this lily pond I photographed in Hanoi a couple months ago. Let's zoom in to the areas on the side here and try and remove some of the lily pads using our various image repair tools. We'll start with the spot healing brush. If I take the lily pad out with the spot healing brush, the patch is only okay. Again, it's kind of mushed together the detail and doesn't look entirely natural if we look at it too closely. But if I take the lily pads out with the remove tool, look at how much better a job it does of replacing the areas that were removed. It picks up the reflected patterns of the bricks and the geometry or the perspective of the various lines, and it uses that knowledge to create a patch so natural looking, it's as if the pad was never there in the first place. It has been removed. Let's move over to the left side of the photograph and take out these three lily pads that are right next to each other. I'll use the remove tool more like a lasso in this case, and I'll paint all the way around the perimeter of the three lily pads and notice how it fills in for me once I get all the way around. And when I remove this, look at how natural the reconstructed area is. It really blends in with the rest of the scenery and the reflected look in the water. In this example, I want to show you how intelligent the remove tool is at taking out an element that runs in front of or behind another element. In the case of a simple patch, like removing this strap from in front of the pipe that it runs in front of, either one of these tools should do the job. We'll start with the spot healing brush. It does just a fine job. Let's go ahead and switch over to the remove tool. And it also does an excellent job. But what about a more complicated situation? What about a situation like this piece of blue wiring that runs in front of and behind some of the other elements that are here? First, let's try taking it out with the spot healing brush. So I've got the spot healing brush. Of course, I will have to do this all in one single stroke because it won't let me paint or erase. As soon as I let go of the clicker, it's going to apply this. So I will carefully run this stroke right over the little utility box between these two cables. In this case, we have to go over the top of that piece of conduit, and we'll get all the way down to the bottom here. And when I let go, let's see what kind of job it does patching. It actually did a better job than I expected. It's not terrible, but you've got a couple of areas right here where it failed to understand that that had gone in front of this, and it's actually erased this little bit as it has the bit that's down here. Let's switch to the remove tool and let's see how it does with this job. So we'll do the same thing. We'll very carefully paint over these areas. And the nice thing, of course, is that if I miss or I overpaint, I can go back and erase it. I can even switch to a smaller brush as I come through this little narrow area here if I'd like. Really make sure that we're just marking the areas we want to remove. I can stop when I get to that edge and continue over on the other side. And now when I ask it to remove it, let's see if it does a better job than the spot healing brush was able to do. And indeed, it did a much better job. Notice there's no break up in the pipe up here. It really took it away from in front of this utility box. It's pretty clean coming through the gap here, and it transits underneath and across this piece of conduit very convincingly. So we were able to take that out in a much more realistic fashion using the remove tool than we were using the spot healing brush. In this next demo, we'll do something a little more creative and playful. I'd like to take some of the figures out of this photograph, but leave their reflections in the water below. 
The Remove tool is going to be perfect for this job because not only does it do a better job of reconstructing the background elements behind what I removed, but it's going to be so much easier to mark out the areas that I want removed. In fact, if you try and do this with the spot healing brush, it's going to be darn near impossible because of the complexity of the people and the baskets that they're carrying and the fact that you're required to do it in a single stroke. So I can certainly try to come along the edges of these baskets and paint this whole thing out in a single stroke with the spot healing brush. But I can tell you from experience that almost every time I end up either missing a spot or taking out too much or just accidentally letting up the mouse clicker when I didn't mean to, and it goes and it patches all those areas in for us. So much easier to use the remove tool because we have the ability to paint and erase the mask of where the areas are we want it to remove, and it won't do anything until we hit the return key or click the little checkbox in the tool options. So as you can see, I'm having a tough time trying to perfectly paint this figure out using the spot healing brush and doing it all in a single stroke. And it struggles, of course, to remove that. Let's try this again with the remove tool. Now it'll take me a minute or so to paint this whole area out, so I'll go ahead and speed up the video while we do it. Okay, I've finished carefully masking off this figure and I'm ready to remove it. I'll click the little checkbox here. And Photoshop has done an excellent job of removing that figure and reconstructing the area behind it. I might tweak this one small area a little bit and let it replace that a second time. Otherwise, I am pretty happy with the results I got. So once again, I'll go ahead and mask off the other figures. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to wait around while I'm meticulously doing that, and then I'll show you the results. And there you have it, before, after. And it's done a beautiful job of rebuilding that entire background that was behind those figures. Finally, I wanna show you an image taken during the Paris Marathon a few years ago where I used only the remove tool to take out spectators, runners, vehicles, lights, traffic signs, and more. As we move around and you see both the before and the after, notice in some of these busier parts of the image where the remove tool was able to naturally and reconstruct the removed areas. So that's a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the remove tool and why, at least in my experience, it's better at most of these tasks than the spot healing brush, which used to be my go-to tool. For more Lightroom and Photoshop videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and go ahead and click the bell icon to get notified anytime I post a new video. And if you aren't already on my mailing list, head over to jeffhirsch.com and sign up for the mailing list and you'll get updates on my classes and workshops and trips, along with bonus tutorial videos and articles for Photoshop and Lightroom. I promise not to spam your inbox, and I will never, ever sell your address to a third party. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.